Thanks, President. And my question is for the Minister for Local Government. I've asked in this place before about a stabilisation fund and other ways to provide financial stability to smaller, smaller rural councils. The responses I received talked about the Rural Council's transformation program, sustainability fund partnerships, spending allowances for smaller rural councils, uh, which probably wouldn't even in some cases fund one road project, and the library fund. Whilst these are great initiatives, they don't even touch the sides of the issue of long-term sustainability for councils. The rate caps only make their sustainability more doubtful. Whilst I can see the merits and necessity for a rates cap, rate payers still expect councils to deliver the same amount of services with a reduction in revenue. There remains a problem of the incredible disparity between rich, growing, financially prosperous metropolitan councils and councils in rural areas who seem to receive the crumbs in terms of spending. I understand there's a rates bill coming to the House in a few months, but it will unfortunately not deal with this issue. My one singular question is, Minister, can you explain why a stabilisation fund is not actively being explored for rural councils? Minister Lean. Uh, yeah, and thank you, uh, Mr Grimley, for his question. Um, I think as far as um, uh, consideration about any particular fund um, it, it is something that, um, you know, something we, that can be considered into the future. But, uh, but I can say um, that one, one initiative that has recently um, been announced from the Treasurer is the um, opportunity for councils to access the Treasury um, um, Corporation loans, which, is, it, which has been um, actually advocated by uh, particularly peri-urban and rural councils for a number of years. And um, actually, uh, that their aspiration for that has been fulfilled. Um, and I understand that um, Mr. Grimley's um, right in that there is a, you know, the, the sustainability of small rural councils is an ongoing issue, and um, we continue to work with rural councils Victoria regarding, you know, what what may be uh, successful ways for rural councils to. Um, become sustainable into the future, and, and I understand there's a number of issues that they have to deal with. Um, and Mr. Grimley is right. So, some of these issues, as far as geographically the, the size of their councils compared to metropolitan councils, the road networks, the, all the challenges um, that they have, and, and some of the um, some of the some of the small rural councils was up at a rural council up at the top of the state a few months ago that. Um, have um, a number of uh, renewable energy projects um, that they've um, lobbied for and are being initiated in their particular local government area, which will bring in uh, quite a fair bit of ongoing rate revenue. So there's a number of different you know, initiatives that small rurals are enacting themselves. Um, and I'll just say to Mr Brimley that um, any, suggested, any more suggestions around uh, rural council sustainability, um, we're always open to that. Um, and it's been, a, uh, I think a couple of years ago, we were all on a decentralisation program from the uh, metropolitan areas to go out to rural Victoria. Um, I think the, the pandemic sort of sorted that out for us and people are rushing out to those areas. So um, there will be an increased rate base but I do respect that is the challenge within itself as well. So we'd like to work with those small rural councils about turning that challenge into an opportunity. Mr. Greenbaum, my supplementary. Thanks, President. Thanks, Minister. Um, yeah, fantastic answer. Um, clearly, housing is an issue that would uplift the, the right base of councils, and despite the future of the rate cap, uh, it would help the financial situation of rural and regional councils hugely. Uh, there are places in my electorate, as you'd be well, well over, I'm sure, that um, have seen an incredible demand for housing, like you mentioned with the um, displacement of those from metropolitan to the regional areas. Um, I've spoken about the low rental vacancies before around Western Victoria in particular. I have suggested a regional housing summit um, to gather ideas about how we can fix the housing crisis. And, uh, and whilst housing isn't necessarily in your portfolio, um, it is an issue that will directly go to the financial sustainability for councils. Um, the Minister for Housing we've spoken to, she was receptive of the idea. But um, yeah, look, my question I suppose is, will, will you, Minister, speak with the Minister for Housing to progress the idea of a regional housing summit, uh, given the benefits for local councils? Yeah, and I, and I think the short answer is yes, because it, it's all already coming into fruition. Um, and you know, given my um, regional colleagues here, we have spoken about, Mr Gribbley, um, and, and you, you, you're hitting the nail on the head, we have spoken about this issue about in regional Victoria around housing, lack of rental, um, the cost of uh, housing, which is which is which is you know Airbnb, 
there is a number of issues and it's an, and it's an area that we really want to work in with the rural councils to find ways to support them. And, and I've actually asked, that, I've said to them, look, any initiatives, any ideas they want to bring to us will be really appreciated.